Okay. Um, we've talked now about uh, pure set theory, different uh, enumerating some sets. And now let's see if we have time. Yes, there is some time. There is 16 minutes left. So let's um, start implementing uh, the eval function uh, for this syntax of proposition. I, I should perhaps mention that somebody asked in the break um, or just before the break, is prop the same I use uh, as on the slides when I use the proof rules for all elements and so on? And I was said, no, not really. So in the chapter, if you read it, you will see that we do at least three different implementations of logic. Um, so it's a bit difficult to get everything into this first lecture. So you, you will get some more about it in the, the next lecture, but you should also read carefully the, the chapter and, and uh, ask questions if you if you still got, got confusion there. But let's now focus on the first data type prop, which has these constructors, these four examples we saw earlier. And as we start, the first attempt of the semantics was that we should translate a prop to a bool. And if we ignore the name case, we can. So let's start with that. So I will also, um, let's remove that one. Um, I've already taken the liberty of implementing a skeleton here. So first of all, the eval function will always have the shape syntax to semantics. So that's why I've defined a type synonym syn for prop and sem for bool. We will have to change the same type later, but let's start with this. So that's one part of making this sort of reproducible, easy to, to sort of see the pattern. And the other is that I've used the wishful thinking pattern. Again, I implement eval of the syntax tree by always calling eval itself on all subtrees. So everything, everywhere there is prop in the data type, I call eval again. And when I have called eval again, it means that every subtree has now been replaced by a piece of semantics. In this case, just one Boolean value. And the only thing remaining in each step is to convert those subtrees results into the final result of the eval function. So let's and, and I, I also strongly encourage you to always give names of these functions and types. So you can see down here that each constructor, con, not, and, or implies a name, have a corresponding implementation with, here I just put an S suffix. So con S, not S, and S, or S, and imp S, and name S is somewhere further down. And I given their types explicitly just to keep track of what's happening. And then what the reason I'm doing this is partly to make sure that it's not, there's nothing wrong in the structure of the function and partly because I want to be able to test these functions independently of the top level. Okay, so con s, if we start implementing now, it takes a Boolean b and returns well, any suggestions? B, yes. So remember that sem is equal to bool so far, which means that we already have the boolean. The only thing we can do is return it. Okay, and actually we could just write con s equals id. That's equivalent. That's now remove that one from the undefined list and check. Yeah, it, it type checked. Okay, not S. What should that be? Yeah, it's the pre prelude function not. So uh, what's the type of not? Well, it's bool to bool and we know that sem is equal to bool. So it does the right thing. If we have already two booleans, we should just uh, swap um, or one Boolean, which just swap its value. So let's remove from there and reload. Okay, what should AND S be implemented is?
Yes. So double ampersand is the Haskell prelude built in function for uh, doing logical and or Boolean and. Still seems to work type wise. And not very surprisingly, this is or. And then implication. Well, we don't actually have a um, operator with the right uh, name, but we can define it. So just for symmetry, I will just call it implication. I can't use just equal greater than because that is a reserved symbol in Haskell. So I'll call it equal equal greater than. And then I will define that here. So it should take two booleans and return a boolean. Oh, let's let's uh, cut that part uh, and see if it yeah, is a type correct. So this is the table we had in the first slide in the Jamboard, which said that if we have false implied anything, then that's true. And if we have true, whoops, true implies something, then it's the same th something. So true implies true, true implies false is false. But the, so there's just one case which is false. And um, so this is one way of implementing something which is close to implementing the eval function. So we can already test it on something simple, eval and uh, con true, con true, or yeah, well, I, I will not test it on more things. But we cannot use the name case because we haven't defined name s yet. And not only have we not defined it, it is hopeless. I mean, we cannot, with this type, it's impossible. So this is impossible without chain, changing sem. OK, so we need to change the semantics. And I will do that in two steps. First, I will replace current sem with simple sem. And I will define a new semantics, which is the, the real thing. And we saw already on the slide that it should be a table to the simple sem. How do we prove it's impossible to implement name S with the current SEM? Um, so I only have eight minutes now, so I not, not prove that it's impossible, but uh, it needs to give different results depending on what variables you have. So if, if you try to see what eval uh, of uh, name X is when, uh, well, when the assignment function, when you vary the assignment function, then you can see that this function needs to have two different results. It needs to be equal to both true and false, but true and false cannot simultaneously be, no, they, they are not equal. So, so proof sketch. But as we only have seven and a half minutes, I will endeavor to see if we can implement at least some of these semantics with the true uh, semantics. So you notice it's an error up here because tab isn't defined. But I said already on the slides that tab should be a translation from name. Oh, did I call it name? Yes. From this type name, translation from name to simple sem. Whoops, simple sem. So a function from string to bool. And here it should now suddenly, now I will invalidate all this code. It suddenly becomes lots of error messages. But let's do the same kind of transition here. Let's um, call, put a prime on all these because they might come in handy. And then now suddenly the only problem is that we haven't defined the con s and not s and so on. And I will, I will copy these 
because I will need to do something similar. Uh, let's first remove the implementations and replace simple SEM with SEM. And it's not equal to bool, it's actually equal to tab to bool. Name S, well, actually, where is name S? It's down here, I'll move it up. Okay, now lots of these, these functions are not defined yet. So we will have to start defining them. Uh, I think to avoid all the error messages, the easiest way is to list them in a tuple, which is completely undefined. So this at least uh, gets me without complaints from Haskell. Now they have the right types and they are all unusable. But it's good to not have a loud left hand side here. So let's start with implementing name s because we already did that. So given a name n, and then we see what is the semantics. So let's copy this line. So semantics is actually a function from tab to bool. And actually, it's more than that. We know that the table itself is a function. It's a function from name to simple sem, which if we want to, we can expand even further. So it's function from string to bool. And even this one is also a string. So the, the actual thing we need to implement is a function taking a name n and a table tab. And if you remember, what we needed to do was just apply this table to our name. So we look up the name in the table. Okay, now at least we got the implementation of the one case we couldn't do before. But we also want to extend the previous implementations like id and not and so on to handle this table. And there is a very generic way of doing this. So I will scroll down a bit to, whoops, undo, to a group of interesting functions, which I call lift zero, lift one, and lift two. So these functions, if we assume that they can be implemented, will do uh, a transformation. So if you, if you think about A, B, so let's, let's take lift two first here. If you set A equals B equals C equals bool, then this will be a function. So lift two of and, for example, would be a function of, whoops, of this type where T is replaced, oh, I can say in, in words instead, where T equals, uh, well, for example, tab to bool. So the thing, the type I wanted to have, I mean, remember up here, sem is tab to bool. So I would like to have a function that takes functions to bool, which has t as a table here, and just combines the results with end. So this means that if I have implemented diff2, which I haven't yet, I can implement and s as lift2 of and s prime. So the previous and Oh yes, and now I don't need it in here. So I will not fill in ORS and IMPS, but you can imagine that it's gonna be very similar. Well, I can fill in ORS at least. Uh, ORS is just lifting ORS prime and so on. But what I want to do is to see, can we actually implement this lift too? So lift two should take, as you see from the examples, as its first argument, an operator like or or and. 
So let's call it off. And then the second argument and third arguments are functions. Let's call them f and g. And then the result should also be a function. I'll, I'll use an anonymous function there. So it takes an x in, or maybe t for table or tab for table. So what should it do? Well, it should let f get the table. It should let G get hold of the table, so it's sort of passed along, and it should let the operator combine the results. So this is enough to define uh, the translation that is called lifting from an operator on Booleans, which is the, the use case up here, and or an and an or are on booleans to functions uh, to, to work on functions instead in this case functions from a table but it could be functions from anything else and uh, well filling in lift zero and lift one completes the implementation then you can look in the in the book or in the live code files for the results there um, but this shows at least that uh, it's possible to implement an eval function for prop, which handles all these cases, including looking up names. And that concludes uh, this lecture, which hopefully will be continued on um, Thursday with more explanation of first order logic. Okay, thanks.